How many of you read the whole Bible cover to cover? Come on. <laughs> the best seller in the whole world for all time, di mo nabasa cover to cover? Kasi ang kapal, ano? Ang English, ganyan. English Bible, ganyan. Tagalog Bible, ganyan. Ilocano Bible, ganyan, kakapal, no? Kasi ang hahaban ng mga Ilocano words na malalalim. But how about today, I will summarize for you the whole Bible. Not in 10 pages, but in one sentence. Oh, gusto mo niyan? <laughs> so summarize natin yung buong Biblia, the message of the whole Bible, into just one sentence. Hindi yung mahabang compound sentence, yung maikling, pinaka maikling sentence na possible. Siyempre, English lesson mo na. Bago ang sentence ay pwedeng qualified as a complete sentence, ano bang dapat meron? Dapat merong dalawang components. Ang tinatawag doon, subject and predicate. Okay, so the subject or uh, sa simpleng salita, noun. And then predicate, I think of that like the verb. Diba? So dapat may subject and predicate. Anong subject ng Biblia? Sa palagay nyo? Ano yung noun? Yung pinaka noun of the whole Bible? Bida. It's God. Oh, everybody say God. Now, yung, yung iba sinong Jesus. Well, walang, si, walang Jesus kung wala si God. Diba? So, mas fundamental si God because God is the Father who brought out Jesus. No? So, so, God. How about the verb? How, what's the action of the whole Bible? Could be love. God, God's love, that's already a noun, but it could be loves. Pero love is the motivation but what would be the, the, the real action would be there? What does love do? Gives. We just sang about it, Kanina. Gives. So if I was to summarize the whole Bible in one sentence, it's that God gives. He gives. He gave. Actually, not future tense, gives, but past tense. God gave. Ang Dios ay isang giver. Nung bata ko, may book na binabasa ko, Givers and Takers and Other Kinds of Lovers. You know? And kasi sa, sa love life, may ganun eh. May mga nagbibigay, mga givers, givers, giving love, giving attention. And then there's the takers. You, know? you don't love me anymore. Bakit ganyan? And when there's a giver and a taker, somebody loses. But God is a giver. He's not a taker. God wants me to give up everything for Him. He took away my fun. He took away my hobbies. He took my mother. He took my... No, God is not a taker. God is a giver. He loves to give. It's instinct niya, natural sa Dios to give you. It's, his, it's the expression of His love. And the whole message of the Bible is all about God gave. He gave His love. Kaya ang topic natin ngayon is Giveology 101. Okay, kung may biology, sociology, this is Giveology. It's the study of giving. It's the study of being like how God does, no? And I believe that we become like God when we learn to give. John 3.16, very familiar verse. It says, God so loved the world. Get it? Underline it. He gave. He gave His Son. And whoever believes will have eternal life. Tayo, we are the recipients ng pagmamahal ng Dios. Did you think about that? The moment you walk out of your house in the morning, or the moment you wake up, you're already a target of God's love. He wants to get His love to you. He gave, God gave His Son, Jesus, to die. Then Jesus gave His life for us. Diba? So, Antonio, kick the whole theme of the Bible. Uh, God forgave our sins. Try to change the spelling of forgive. It's F O R E dash give. You know, for, in advance of. Nagbigay na siya ng give forgiveness. You know, before you begged God to forgive you, He forgave you. 
forgiveness. Be nurtured ng sa, sa pamamagitan ng cross and the death of Jesus, He bought forgiveness for you. And when you believe and receive, you get saved. You, you, you avail. The Bible says in Ephesians 2.8, we are saved by God's grace. Now, the word grace actually means gift. Aduna gift. Charis in, in Greek. Charis. It's a gift. And when we receive that gift, napapasa atin yung panibagong mm, nature. Kumbaga, God becomes your father nagmamana ka sa kanyang mga characteristics. Ibig sabihin, yung kanyang nature, mahapapa sa'yo. You actually get a reformatting of your software. God installs new programs in you. You become a giver na rin, just like Him. You get a new nature. You start to give your life back. Diba? Binigay ni Jesus ang buhay niya sa'yo. You give your life back to Him. This is all the theme of the Bible. Nandito tayo ngayon because we gave our time. Well, kanina, nang nagpuri tayo sa Diyos, we, we gave praise to Him. You give thanks to God. We give our resources, our money sa Kanyang purposes, sa Kanyang kaharian. We give our efforts. So it's all about giving, giving, giving. So we more giveology. Yeah, let's, just, let's study giving. Because listen, real giving will equal real living. You want to have a good life, give, be, become a giver like God. It's really like, I, I, I should have made the title something like, you know, um, learn to give, learn to live. Because talagang the best life is not the closed life. Na, you know, makasarili. It's impossible to be happy. If you're selfish, it's just impossible. It's never, it never would work. Yung makasarili, yung, yung hindi giver, yung tight-fisted, close-hearted, will never be happy as a selfish person. Giving will bring you real living. God is a giver, not a taker. Write that down. God is a giver, not a taker, and He wants to make us become in His own image. You are most like God when you're giving. When you're giving your time, your heart, giving your attention, giving your patience, giving encouragement, giving your resources, that's when you're most like God. And everything in the Bible is is just all about reflecting God's giving, generous gracious nature and when we give we reflect god we do like what he's doing we and and it changes us when you give you change parang jesus said you know your heart and your your money are actually connected he said when you give your money Wherever your money goes, your heart will be there. That's why if you invest ka sa isang stock, talagang you will follow that. Every, you will look in the, you know, online, how's your stock? Because you and your money, when you give, you will change. Your heart will change. Higit pa doon, other people's lives will change. Kita mo yung kanina, yung video ng mga vacation Bible school ng mga bata? Grabe, nagbago ng buhay nila. Their parents, their, their grandparents testified. Kakaiba, a huge change. Nakaroon ng confidence. Nagdadasal. Bago tum- you know, it's, it's, ch- it's people that gave their time or gave prizes or food or gave their teaching to these kids. Changed lives. Sino sa inyo gusto na maging useful to God's kingdom, to change lives, to, to make a difference in the world. Giveology 101 is the course we need to take. Two points. Very simple today. Number one, God gives. God gives. Obvious ba? You know, for God so loved the world, He gave. But did you know that 
bago nagbigay ang Diyos si Jesus, mayroong iba nang ibinigay ng Diyos. Long before God gave Jesus, He gave something else. And most people don't know what He gave or why. But it was long ago, God gave laws. Laws, mga utos. God gave laws. Uh, Exodus 31.8, when the Lord finished speaking to Moses on Mount Sinai, He gave him two tablets of the covenant of law. The covenant law. Yung Ten Commandments. Sino sa inyo nakakita ng Ten Commandments? Yung stones and then, you know, sa Lawanyon High or sa Laweko. Sino sa inyo na, na, na can you memorize? Or did you memorize? No. But sino sa you believe in those? Parang kayo ano, mga innocent. Hindi, Ten Commandments. Hindi ba sikat dito sa Lawanyon na Ten Commandments? But God gave those. He gave the laws. Actually, the Ten Commandments are just the, the basic headings. The, the book of Leviticus and Deuteronomy extrapolates or expounds on those ten laws. And the truth is, God did not just give ten. He gave six, there's 613 laws all about diet, all about some of you didn't read the ones on diet, right? All about what you eat and what you, all about social uh, things, all about uh, sanitation, iba-iba, all different categories. Sexual uh, laws, what you can do and not do. Sino sa inyo mahilig sa mga rules? Yay! Alam mo, nasa high school ako. Eh? Siyempre, first day of classes, may mga orientation, and the teacher will stand up, or the coach... You know, you para siyang drill sergeant sa military. And sasabihin niya lahat ng mga rules. And you know what I hear? Ito yung naririnig ko. Blah, 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 blah. Parang si Charlie Brown, pag nakakarinig siya ng mga salita ng adults, parang yung mga rules, it's like, siyempre pag, you know, kabataan, we don't like rules. Sino sa inyo na pag merong do not do this, do not do that sa school, sasabihin mo, teacher, teacher, kakabitin yan, pwedeng bigyan pa ng mga more rules. I, I, I love this. More rules, please. Para maging limited kami lalo. No. Of course, we don't like rules as a young people, right? But they're necessary somehow, right, in the, the place. But God gave laws. <coughs> Question is, why? Why do you think God gave the laws? What's the reason? Most people think or assume Kaya ang binigay ng Diyos ng mga laws because the people are bad and God wants to make them good. And so if we give them laws and they follow the laws, they will become good. Yun ang parang natural assumption that the laws will make you behave. Do the laws really make you behave? Bakit sa, ano eh, bakit sa malapit sa amin, mayroong signboard doon, bawal magtapon ng basura dito. Pero bakit laging andyan yung tambakan ng basura? May law naman, may very clearly stated, black and white, expectations, and doon na yung standard, do not, bawal, na magtapon ng basura dito. Eh bakit ginagawa? So ibig sabihin sa akin, i-conclude ko, hindi pala effective yung nakasulat na batas o utos. Diba? That's not effective. So listen, here's the point. Most people think, I'm a good person. I'm a good person. And uh, hindi naman ako nasasaktan, hindi, ako naman, no, hindi naman ako uh, gumagawa ng masama. Sabi ng mami ko, I'm good. Sabi ng girlfriend ko, I'm good. Most people assume I'm a good person compared sa kanya. But the laws, here's the reason why God gave laws. To show us how sinful we really are. God did not give you laws because He thinks you can keep them. 
God knows you will break the laws. Don't you think God knows that? God knows that you cannot perfectly meet His standards. Ang Diyos, banal. Mataas ang standard niya. In fact, listen. The standard of God's goodness and holiness is much higher than you thought. Kung akala mo, ganito ang level ng standard ng Diyos sa kabanalan, no. No, 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 no. Sabi ni Jesus, you've heard it was like this. Do not commit adultery. But you've seen nothing yet. I tell you, the standard's up here. Don't even look with lust in your heart. You've heard you must not commit murder. This is what you thought. But I tell you, the standard is higher than you could imagine. Don't even hate. It's the same as murder. You have heard it was like this, but the standard is like that. You must forgive or your father will not forgive you. You, um, what, what did Jesus say? He said, uh, it's harder for, uh, it's easier now for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for any man to get into the kingdom of heaven. Grabe naman. Sabi ng mga disciples, Jesus, pagka ganon, sino pwedeng mali, sino maliligtas? Well, sobrang taas ng standard mo. And Jesus said, with man, it's just really impossible. But with God, kayang kaya niya. Look at Romans 7, verse 7 to 8. It says that it was the law, okay, the mga laws, that showed me my sin. Kaya pala eh. The law's purpose was to what? Show me my sin. Paul said, I would never have known the sin in my own heart, the evil desires that are hidden there. If the law had not said, you must not have evil desires in your heart. Covet. But the sin, itong sabi niya, the sin stimulated all my covetous desires. Ibig sabihin, the, the, the law steered up. It showed me who I really am. Tunay na colors ko. So do you understand that the laws were never really meant for you to keep them? They were meant that when you break them, it will show you just how sinful you are. And, and the good news is coming. Letter B, or the next part of that is that it will bring you to Jesus. You know the word Jesus, the name Jesus means the one who saves. Tagapagliktas. So pa, pag nakita na natin yung problema, ba, ganun pala, hindi pala ako good, pala ko good ako, hindi pala ako good. Then the law, purpose of the laws of God is to bring you to Jesus. Kasi you will be so desperate, you will be so guilty, you will be so convicted, you will say, how can I be saved? And Jesus is like, me! I'm the Savior. You need me. You can't save yourself. It's impossible. Somebody, Jesus, me. I'll do it. I'll do it. I save you. See, you can't be saved by doing it yourself. The laws were never meant. You know, the law of God, the laws of God are very holy and very good, but they cannot make you good. They cannot make you holy. They can only show you that you need a Savior. Romans, again, chapter 8, it says in verse 3 that the law of Moses was unable to save us because of our human nature, so weak. But God did what the law could not do. He sent His own Son. He gave, He gave, gave His own Son in a body, and in that body, God declared an end. Tapusna. He declared an end to the sin, to sin's control over us by giving His Son as a sacrifice for our sins. Galatians 3.24 says the law has become, ito yung purpose ng law, it's become our tutor. To what? Anong purpose? To bring us to Christ. So once na nalaman mo na ito ang standard ng Dios, you realize I'm not qualified. And Jesus is there.
to qualify you. Does that make sense? Is anybody learning something today? So if you are guilty because you only uh, kept five of the Ten Commandments, but the other five you broke, Sabi sa James 2, if you keep all the laws of God, you keep perfectly all the laws, but you slip up in just one little mistake, Sabi niya, you're as guilty as the one who broke every law there ever was. Grabe, no? Ang lupit, ano? You will be guilty just for breaking one law. But guess what? Jesus takes our sin away. And He qualifies. Parang ganito, no? Let's say the Ten Commandments are like a test. And never mind the ten, kasi sa totoo lang, yung test ni God is 613. So imagine you had a test, 613 questions or tests on the exam ni God. And if you, kung bumagsak ka or nagkamali ka sa isang question lang, bagsak ka sa buong exam. Wala nang 95%, wala nang grading on the curve. If you fail to get 100% perfect, you fail the whole test. You fail the whole course. Now, ano bang gusto mo? You take the test and do your best. Or, there's another option. Jesus will take the test for you. And your name will be on his test paper. And he will legally proxy you and take the test for you so that kung anong grade niya, mapapa sa'yo. And kung anong track record niya, na ilalagay sa accounts mo. Okay ba yan? Anong gusto mo? Try your best and take, take the test? Or, let Jesus take the test for you. If you sit there and try to say, I'm a good person, I, I, I don't hurt people, I, I think I'm a good person, I do what's right and wrong. You're like the one who says, I can pass that test. You know, the old, the, the, before, when God gave the Ten Commandments, sabi ng mga tao, we can keep perfectly all the laws that God will give us. Ang yabang, no? And it wasn't, how many days lang? They, they, they broke, they started worshiping idols. and everything. So I tell you, better let, Jesus save you. That's God's way. The laws of God are actually not for you to keep. They are for you to realize His standard is high and you need His life in you. You need a Savior. So God gives law, yes, but He gives grace. Let her be. God gives grace. And that's the good news. And it gets better and better and better. So be more grace. Remember, grace means gift. It's undeserved favor, and it is free. Almost too good to be true, but it's true. Almost. Romans chapter 5 and verse 6, chapter 8, it says, it was while we were powerless to help ourselves, okay, to save ourselves, that Christ died for sinful men. Do you know that? Did you know that you're helpless to save yourself, but Christ died for you? Hindi ka pa nag-ask sa kanya na matay para sa iyo. Hindi ka pa nag uh, nagbebeg for forgiveness. Gumawa siya ng way to forgive your sins. And it says that the proof of God's amazing love is this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So I recognize na Ang gift ng Dios sa akin is not just the laws showing this is my standard, these are my expectations. Kung hanggang dun lang patay, we won't even love God because His standards are too high. Hindi ko nakaka-relate. Pero hindi, yan, hindi lang yun ang binigay ng Dios. He gave grace. He gave a gift. The gift of God is eternal life. Now, the grace is you, you don't deserve, but He'll give you. You don't deserve to be forgiven, but He'll forgive you. You don't deserve to have another chance, but He gives you. Grabe, no? So recognize God as the provider. You'll never be able to do enough, save enough, work enough to pay God enough na pangbawi o pangligtas ng sarili mo. 
And same thing with even our finances. Lahat na mga, yung mga you cannot really save enough na makakapagsabi na sa wakas, financially secure na ako. Alam mo may mga, okay, sorry sa mga network marketing guys dito. Sorry for that. But I've been through that. They would say, you can be financially free. Diba? Oh, that's the pitch, no? You will have uh, residual income. You know, you can have all that you want. A yacht, your own car, house and lot. Pinapakita pa yung pera. But you know what? That's good. Earn as much as you can. But the security is not on money. It's on God. It's not that He provides. It's that He is provider. That's just who He is. It's not just that God heals. He is the healer. It's just, it gives you himself. And everything that he is and does and has, he gives it to you. It's not just that God loves you sometimes. He is love. And he gives himself to you. That's giveology, God style. <laughs> and God wants us to be blessed. He does. Sinong father na gustong pahirapan ng anak mo for no reason? Wala. The father loves his children. He wants them to be blessed. The scripture says, God takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. Akala ko before na ang feeling ko is ando doon sa heaven si God at meron siyang timba or meron siyang malaking you know, uh, tanki ng mga sumpa. Sakit, you know, uh, parusa, whatever kinds of sumpa, you know, diskrasya, whatever. And God is just waiting for you to make a mistake. Akala ko na, once na nagkamali ako, yan, psh, he'll pour out his curses. Punishment, I'll show you, I'll get you back. And that God is just looking for any time you make a mistake, then he'll curse you. Friends, that's not the heart of our God. It's the opposite. God has a big bucket of blessings He wants to pour out to you. He's just, he's just waiting para ma bullseye. He's waiting for you to be in alignment with His will, to be open to receive para hindi masayang ibubuhos niya sa'yo ng blessings, favor, healing, prosperity, sound mind, spiritual gifts. Ang nice ng Diyos is His heart is for you to go up, not down. Read my lips, friends. God is for you. Hindi siya laban sa'yo. He's a giver, not a taker. And so one is God gives. Number two is we give. We give. You give. Kung ikaw ay born anew, if you receive Jesus Christ and you receive the second birth, hindi lang yung physical birth, kundi yung spiritual birth, guess what? Maliban pa sa physical father mo, meron ka ng spiritual father. Does that make sense? E kung ikaw ang nagmana sa tatay o nanay mo na physical na characteristics, Mata, ilong, buhok, personality. Iba? Normal yan. Nagmamana tayo sa ating mga physical. DNA, genetics. Guess what? Spiritually, nagmana ka rin sa tatay mo. And anong puso niya? Anong instinct niya? He's a giver. E di kung giver siya, giver ka rin. So if you're in Christ, you actually are generous. You're a giver. Maybe hindi pa na na-upgrade or na-catch na, na on yung sa pag-iisip mo. Maybe yung mindset mo is still has the old habits of, you know, selfish and fear of giving. Baka mawawalaan ako. But you have inside of you a nature na panibago. God put you, He, he made you generous. And He said in Matthew 10 verse 39, Jesus said, if you try to keep your life you will actually lose it. But if you give up your life for me, you will find true life. 
So, higit sa lahat na maari may bigay, we have to give our, we give our lives. God gave His life sa atin, kaya nakakapagbigay din tayo. Listen, hindi mo, hindi mo kayang magbigay ng wala pa sa'yo. Have you ever tried that? You know, someone says, can I borrow money? I, you know, ikaw lang ang pag-asa ko. Hindi ko alam kung sama ko. How much you need? Uh, only 350,000. Eh, wala <laughs> How can you help? How can you give? Na wala Wala pa sa'yo. How can you give your life unless you find true life first? See? How can you give forgiveness to yung nakasakit sa'yo unless you first are a carrier of abundant forgiveness from God for your sins? Are you following me? How can you be patient with others until you have realized how patient God is with you? How can you give anything to others, encouragement, unless you first become an expert, aggressive, unashamed recipient of God's grace to your life? Nago overflow po ang time, talents, and treasures we give in our relationships, giving attention, give love, give care, relational giving, then we give in our resources, resource giving. Oras is a resource, di ba? Pera. Di ba? Ating skills and, and kaalaman that we, we give. Now what if, dito ka, maybe some of you here are saying, sana giver ako. I wish I was more of a giver rather than a taker. Sa totoo lang, ayong aminin pero selfish ako, greedy. Makasarili talaga ako. Yun ang nature ko. I don't know how to change. Listen, don't believe that lie. Your nature is no longer selfish. When you're in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5.17, kung sino man na kay Kristo na, you, bagong nilalang ka na. You have a new, you are a new creation. You have new instincts. You have new uh, nature in you. Now, just like yung anak ko, nagiging, ang, ang kamukha niya, ang mukha niya, nagiging katulad ko. Buhok niya, katulad. But hindi na, hindi naging obvious nung baby pa siya. Diba? We start looking like our parents the more as we mature. It, it, as a little baby, you don't say, oh, he looks like his father. May konting resemblance, pero mahirap eh. Usually, they're just trying to be nice. Right? <laughs> But usually, the baby is kind of ugly and he doesn't, you know, he doesn't look like... But habang nagmamature, sorry for that, pero you know, some babies are really... Eh. But we say, oh, he's cute! Pero... <laughs> the truth is, it becomes more and more like his parents as he matures, as he grows. And in Christ, as you start growing in Christ, more matured, you start looking and acting and thinking and feeling more and more like Christ. So, how can we give? First of all, know this, letter A, because we've received a new nature. Aminin mo yan. Accept that. Declare that. Receive that by faith. I have a new nature in me. Kung gusto mo maging generous, kung gusto mong maging isang giver, you have to accept by faith that that's who I am now. Kung ikaw ay makasarili, kung ikaw ay madamot, greedy, noon yun. But when Christ came in you, He installed new software. Baka hindi pa nalalaunch yung program, but He put that new software in you. And you are gracious, you are full of grace and truth. John 1, chapter 1, verse 14 says, The law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Christ. Nung tinanggap mo si Jesus, kasama doon ang grace and truth. And you are generous because you've got a generous spirit in you, the spirit of your Father. By faith, declare, I have a new identity. By faith, declare it over yourself. So, mo, I am a generous giver. Because if how you think will dictate how you live. That's the power of how your mind can either release you to do 
what God has called you to or to hinder you. So you believe, I am a generous giver. I have generosity himself living inside of me. That's who I am now. And begin to practice that. Jesus said in Luke 6, verse 35, love your enemies and help and give. There's the word give again. Without expecting anything in return. Live out this God-created identity. Underline that. Live out this God-created identity. Mayroon kang panibagong ID. The way our Father lives towards us. Ganun ka now. Generous and gracious. He's even kind to those who are ungrateful and full of sin. Do you believe that? See, most we, we thought God is good to the people who are good. But God was mad sa mga, pa, sa mga taong na bad. Kaya be good para hindi magalit si God sa'yo. No, that's not how God thinks. Ang puso ng Diyos, He's good and kind and He's a giver to even the ungrateful and full of sin. But they don't recognize it, they don't appreciate it, but He is still a giver. Kahit anong gawin mo, you cannot change God's nature. He is gracious. And if you were born selfish physically, but you're born again generous. See? That's the power of having a new birth. Yeah. Right. You cannot change the genetics of birth. Yeah. And you cannot change who you are. When you're born spiritually, you get a new genetic code. Yeah. Want to be like Jesus? You are. Just call it out. Yeah. Believe it and receive it. Yeah. Letter B is, why do I give? Because we have received abundance of grace. You know, the more you receive, the more you can give. Tama po ba? Kung ikaw ay nakatanggap ng malaki, you can give more. Kung ikaw ay puspos ng, ng uh, what you call that? Uh, you have so much joy inside you. Parang it's bubbling over, it's overflowing. You will be a joy giver. If you have so much patience, or you have so much kindness, yan ang aapaw sa iyo. Well, we have received abundance of grace. So we give grace. Sabi ni Jesus na ganito, He who has been forgiven much. Yung babae na she was an, uh, what, a prostitute or something. Sabi ni Jesus, He who has been forgiven much. Or in this case, she. Maraming nakatanggap siya ng forgiveness. Malaki. Mga kasalanan niya, they were big. Ang dami. Pinatawad lahat yan. He who has received much forgiveness Sabi ni Jesus, loves much. Bakit? Kasi nakatanggap ng much. And if you become aware and conscious of how much you've been forgiven, you will forgive all of those people that hurt you. Your ex, your father, you know, your business partner that cheated you, your classmates that lied about you. You will easily forgive once you become aware of how much you've been forgiven. Whatever it is, that you need to give, realize it's been given already. Sabi ni Jesus, Matthew 10, 8, freely you have received, freely give. Nakatanggap ka free, then you can freely give. It's done. Yung kanyang package of salvation. Salvation is not just a ticket, not admit one, go to heaven. Hindi sa ganun eh. Salvation is a whole package of benefits. And it's all been given to you for free. You just receive it. What is that daily? You know, the Bible says His mercies are new every morning. His favor is undeserved. He delights and takes pleasure in our prosperity. On and on and on. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and forget not all His benefits. Kung sabihin mo, well, I cannot give kasi hindi pa ako nakatanggap ng maraming benefits. Sinasabi mo, benefits jan, benefits jan, favor, grace, provision, healing. Buti pa yung mga talagang mga strong Christians nakakatanggap na maraming benefits from God. Ako, wala. Struggling pa ako. You know what? Just because hindi ka pa nakatanggap doesn't mean God hasn't given you. Listen, God has given you. 
But it's a different story kung nakatanggap ka o hindi. That's your choice. Because all resources that God gives, is through, you receive it through faith. Not a lot of faith, but just faith. So when God gives you His grace, receive it by faith. You know, minsan may, nagbiga, may nagregalo sa akin, pero yung auntie ko, so dinala niya yung gift para sa akin doon sa bahay ng parents ko. Sa US. Anong benefit sa akin dito? Dito ako sa Pilipinas eh. E binigay niya, so pinurchase, guinea wrap, and yung pangalan ko, dinala doon sa bahay sa US. So dito ako sa Pilipinas. So even though, ginasto siya, parang andun na, binigay na, hindi, walang pakinabang sa akin. Until such time na I will travel to the US and take the gift. There's many Christians na ganon ng lifestyle. We're living a lifestyle na, in fact, God has given you much. But there's a delay that you have not yet received. Hindi pa nararanasan because there's a, probably a, a gap in our mindset, our faith. We still think God will not give, but God has given. So we know God has blessed me. Yeah. Titus 3.5 the grace of God has been revealed. Romans 5.5, 5, He's poured out His love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. And the last point is just simply, um, you know, if you have a need, maybe today you are struggling financially, or maybe you need healing in your body, or maybe you need a relationship restored. Hanggang ngayon, hindi kayo bati ng father mo or husband mo or uh, classmate mo. You know, if you have a need, here's the point, sow a seed. Have a need, sow a seed. If whatever you need, start thinking like God. Think like a giver. And as you start giving, mararanasan mo yung kinakailangan mo. Example, you go to a new, na transfer ka to a new place. New company, new school. Wala kang kakilala doon. And you need friends. Okay, we all need friends. So, anong gagawin mo doon? I need a friend. You're going to pray for a friend? The best way to fulfill that need, to have your needs met, is you start giving friendship. Taliwat kanan. You just start giving friendship around. And what will happen? You're going to get a friend. Simply lang, no? But it works with anything. Have a need, sow a seed. You need healing. Maybe you're not feeling well. You're, you got, look, look for people who are struggling and pray for them and give the benefit of God's healing to them. And what will happen? Gagaling ka rin. Think about it. If you need encouragement, you're discouraged. You know, maybe sa bahay, Puro negative ang naririnig mo. Sinasabi nila sa'yo na, oh, wala kang pakinabang anak, ganito, ganyan. And you say, walang nagmamahal sa akin. Walang nag-encourage sa akin. You know, you need some encouragement. Ano gagawin mo? Self-pity? No. Go look for someone who's discouraged. Someone who needs comforting. And you just tell them, you know, God loves you. Don't worry, you know. And you just start giving encouragement. Kaya mo yan, bro. I'm with you. What will happen? When you give encouragement, you're going to be encouraged. Yeah. Are you? Is it? Yeah. That's, not too, that's not too hard, right? right. Ganon din. Pera. You need money. You say, hindi ako pwede magbigay sa kaharihan ng Diyos eh. Dami kong gastos. Bankrupt na kami. Wala akong langwa. You know what? That's exactly the thing you need to give. Sow your money to show I need you, God, and I believe you have resourced me. I believe you're not just giving me, you are my provider. So, ganon. Ganon din, oras. Maybe you say, wala kong time, gusto kong maglingkod, wala kong oras. Tide a little bit of your time and you'll find God will do a miracle on your schedule. Whatever you need, sow a seed. Everything in the Bible reflects God's giving nature. Yan po ang summary ng Bible, giveology. Remember, God is a giver, not a taker. He gave Jesus 
to save us. When we give, we're reflecting like him. It changes our lives. It changes other people's lives. And I believe that when you start giving, you're going to start living the good life. So put your hand on your heart like this and say, I want to be a giver. Come on, say, I want to say, I'm a giver, not a taker. God has given me so much. I receive it. And I want, I want to overflow and be like God. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for this, your army, this, your people. They're givers. Lahat na nakatanggap kay Jesus, they have a new nature in them. I pray you activate that new nature. You, you matured up that new nature so that they will become instinctive, automatic givers. Giving in relationships, giving of resources. I pray that in our homes, mararanasan po namin ng, ng giving, uh, serving our spouse, you know, uh, giving attention, giving compliments. And pray, I pray that we would be givers in our workplace, being an asset, doing more than expected, becoming a blessing, becoming a... Fr- Lord, use us to overflow lahat ng mga iyong benefits that pinakaloob mo sa amin. And cause us to be uh, a, a direct reflection of who you are. That people around us will not be drained. They will be filled. They will not be discouraged. They will be so inspired by your glory that is radiating off of our lives. So I pray, Lord, in Jesus' name, that anyone here that maybe, maybe hindi pa sigurado sa kanilang relationship sa nyo, I pray that they would just uh, reach out to Jesus. It's not the laws that saved us, but it's Jesus. It was not the laws that helped us. It was your grace. I thank you for the abundance of grace and your free gift of righteousness through Jesus. Amen. Amen.